Hey, welcome to the Draft Academy. My name is Mike. In this tutorial, I'm gonna teach you guys how to build a calculator in C. If you've been following along with this course, you'll know that in the beginning of the course, we actually created a calculator and it was a very basic calculator. Basically, we let the user input two numbers and we took those numbers, we added them together and we printed the answer out onto the screen. In this tutorial, I'm gonna take some of the stuff that we've learned since then and show you guys how we can build a fully functional four function calculator. So this calculator will be able to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and we're gonna let the user decide which one they wanna do. So we'll let them decide if they wanna add or subtract or whatever. It's gonna be pretty cool and we're gonna end up using some of the stuff that we've learned recently in the course, like if statements. We're also gonna uh, use like getting input from users and I'm gonna show you guys how you can get characters as input from a user as well. So down here, we wanna start making our calculator. Basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna ask the user to enter a number, then I'm gonna ask them to enter an operator like plus, minus, uh, division or subtraction. Finally, we're gonna ask them to enter in a third number and then we'll, depending on what operator they specify, so addition, subtraction, whatever, we will perform the correct operation and we'll print out the number. So the first thing I wanna do is create variables where we can store the numbers and the operator. So I'm gonna make some double variables and I'm just gonna call this one num1 and then we'll make another double, we'll call it num2. And finally, we'll make a variable that will store the operator that they enter. So this is just gonna be a char and I'm just gonna call it op for operator. All right, so now we want to actually get input from the user. I wanna figure out what numbers they want to use and then what operator they wanna use as well. So down here, why don't we get some input? The first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna print out a prompt. So I'm just gonna say, enter a number. And now what we wanna do is we wanna be able to take the number that they give us and store it inside of one of those doubles that we created. So I'm just gonna use this scanf function, scanf. And in here, I'm gonna specify that we want to get a double. So remember, when we're using scanf, if we wanna scan for a double, we use lf. And lf is going to scan for a double. And now I'm gonna use a comma and we'll put the variable that we wanna store in here. So I'm gonna use this ampersand and I'm just gonna say num1. So this is exactly what we need to do to be able to get the user's input and store it into num1. The next thing we wanna do is get the operator. So I'm gonna type out another prompt and I'm just gonna say enter operator. Basically they'll be entering in a plus sign, minus sign, asterisk or forward slash depending on what they wanna do. And again, now we're going to scan for a character. Now, when we're scanning for a character in scanf, and I actually don't think I've talked about this yet in this course, we wanna do something special. So I wanna put a percent sign in a C, but before I put percent C, I wanna put a space. So whenever we're getting a character from the user using scanf, we always wanna put a space right here before percent C, otherwise it's not gonna work. And again, we wanna store this in that op variable. So I'm just gonna say op. And one more time, we're gonna get another number. So I'm just gonna copy this, we'll paste this down here, and we're gonna get this one for num2. So now we should have all of the input for our program. So I'm getting the first number, I'm getting the operator, and I'm getting the second number. The last thing we have to do now is actually do the math. So we're gonna have to figure out which operator they wanted to use, right? So we have this op variable. And this is storing like a plus sign, a minus sign, a asterisk or a forward slash. So depending on what that's storing, we wanna print something different out. So we can actually use an if statement to do this. So I can use an if statement to check and see what operator is inside of our operator variable. And depending on which one it is, we can do a different operation. So I can say if, and the first thing I'm gonna do is just check to see if the operator is equal to a plus sign. So if the operator that the user entered is equal to a plus sign, then we're gonna to wanna to add the two numbers together. So I'm just gonna print out these two numbers and I'll just say num1 plus num2 because we're gonna add both of them together. We can also use an else if, so I'm gonna to wanna to check a few other conditions. I'm gonna to check to see if the operator is equal to a minus sign. And if the operator is equal to a minus sign, then instead of adding the numbers, we're gonna subtract them. So over here, I'll just copy this and we'll paste this guy down here. So it's gonna be num1 minus num2. And I can actually just copy this whole thing and we'll paste it down here. So let me make some more room. Down here, we'll paste this other else if. 
And here we're going to check to see if it's division, so we'll check for a forward slash. And again, we're just going to want to print out a decimal number, so it's going to be num1 divided by num2. And finally, we're going to check for multiplication. So if it's multiplication, then we're going to multiply them together. So now we're checking for each of the operators. We're checking for addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division. But here's the thing, what happens if the user enters in an operator that we didn't want? So for example, if they don't enter in any of these operators, we're gonna wanna tell them. So I'm gonna have this like print out a little error message. We're just gonna say else. And basically the code inside this else block will get executed if none of these conditions up here are true. And down here we can just make a print F and I'm just gonna print out invalid operator. So now we have our if statement, our if block set up and this should be everything that we need to use our little calculator. All right, so let's go ahead and run this program. So you can see over here it says enter a number, so we can enter a number. Let's enter in 5.9 and enter an operator. We'll add numbers and now let's enter in 4.0. So we're gonna add 5.9 and four. So when I click enter, we should go through all of those if statements and figure out what we need to do. And you'll see over here that we're adding 5.9 and four together and we're getting 9.9. .9. So looks like the program worked. Let's try it again. We'll try another operator. Why don't we try to multiply some numbers? So let's multiply six and times, I don't know, 5.7. So we get 34.2, that seems about right. All right, and then one more time we'll run this and I wanna try to enter in an invalid operator. So we'll say like 5.7 and I'm just gonna enter in a G. So that's an invalid operator, that's not gonna work. And I'll enter my number, let's do eight. And you can see it tells us invalid operator. So basically we have a four function calculator. This calculator can multiply, divide, subtract, and add. And if you don't enter in a correct operator, it's smart enough to yell at you and tell you that you have an invalid operator. So this seems to work pretty well. I'm, I'm pretty happy with it. And you can see down here, like this is a perfect situation for using something like an if statement, right? We have this variable OP, right? It's storing some sort of operator. We don't necessarily know what's inside of there, but I can use if statements and I can respond to the different scenarios. So in the situation where it's a plus sign, I can respond. In the situation where it's a minus sign, I can respond, etc. And this just makes our programs a lot smarter and it helps us to do different things when different situations arise. Hey, thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please leave a like and subscribe to Draft Academy to be the first to know when we release new content. Also, we're always looking to improve, so if you have any constructive criticism or questions or anything, leave a comment below. Finally, if you're enjoying Draft Academy and you want to help us grow, head over to draftacademy.com forward slash contribute and invest in our future.